Among active coaches, 89 wins at North Carolina, that's a school record. And trying to become bowl eligible with a victory this afternoon in the first ever meeting with the Wofford Terriers. The campus is only separated by about 200 miles, and this is their first ever meeting. Wofford won the toss, elected to defer. Here comes Carolina with the return. Conley. And Conley shaken up on the return. So Jaquarius Conley, who was a starter in the defensive backfield for the Tar Heels, shaken up in the initial return of the ball game. So the training and medical staff checking on Conley and we'll update his status in just a moment. We'll step aside for the second comeback to Chapel Hill, North Carolina for ACC football. What is it? Ah, gosh, that's tough. That's Conley, the starting safety. And Jackson Zare with the hustle getting in there on special teams. So Conley to the tent. And Here's our first look at Jacoby Criswell. Six feet, 225 pounds. And again, Sam Howell with the upper body injury. He took a couple of big hits last Thursday in that loss to Pitt in the rainy conditions for the Tar Heels, 30 to 23, and that was in overtime. And some really close calls this season for North Carolina. This is Walston, one of the seniors and grad students honored prior to the game. He's got a first down with 12 yards on the plate of Walston. Here's our impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Good blocking out there. Antoine Green, the ju uh, senior from Rockledge, Florida, playing with so much confidence right now for this offense. He'll be big for these young quarterbacks. And how about that? Tucking it and going a little bit. And Noor, the safety for Wofford's going to be big today, Tom. Got to, got to keep the lid on it. Can't give up the big plays. Criswell with that nice little fake, James, and the opportunity to run up near the North Carolina logo. Ty now Chandler. he wants to throw it. Chandler, good job leading the way with the block. Chandler caught the pass. Iman Wari had the tackle. Eight yards on the play for North Carolina coming into the game at five and five. And three and four in conference play. Three and one at home this season. That's Chandler. He's got the first down near the 40 yard line for North Carolina. And six yards for Chandler. Longo's got that tempo going for his young quarterback. Griswell, remember, we had that Georgia State game, Tom, beginning of the year, and he got a little bit of action late in that game. Went two for two, 54 yards, threw that 47-yard touchdown pass to Nesbitt. Griswell, low pass, but caught near the 35-yard line. Antoine Green and driven back. First down markers at the 30 of Wofford. Beckley had the hit on Green, the senior from Rockledge, Florida. There's Phil Longo. Good talk with him on the Zoom yesterday. Talked about his, his young quarterbacks. This will be an interesting competition in the spring between Drake May and Jacoby Griswell. Chandler barrels his way up the middle. Just inside the 35 yard line for five yards for Chandler. What an addition he's been this season, James, as a transfer from Tennessee. Yeah, former Tennessee Vol led the Vols in rushing as a sophomore. Now the graduate here at UNC, very close to 1,000 yards, and I'd be shocked if he doesn't. Run past 1,000 today, over 3,000 it would be then for his career. He's got room on the right side, broke a couple of tackles, and down near the 21-yard line for Chandler. That's a first down for North Carolina. De Roberto made the tackle 13 yards. 
Yeah. And with the giddy up right back over the ball, Mac Brown looking on as Criswell has done a good job of running him down the field. Quick pitch getting outside here to Chandler. This is Chandler. Just runs over the defender, D. Roberto, inside the 10 yard line. Nice little play call. You got misdirection on the inside. You see the big bodies, so you're pulling those linebackers, those linebackers that are keying through the offensive line on those running backs. You got to respect that movement so it causes them to freeze and gives them a chance to get outside, like the play call. North Carolina in the CPI security red zone to the right side, and Chandler just tripped up at the one. He got seven during this drive. He has gone over 3,000 yards rushing in his career, James, which includes his accomplishments at Tennessee as well. Jordan Tucker doing a good job there on the edge, and a nice job knifing in there. De Roberto, who's been very active for Wofford here early, saving the touchdown. From the one-yard line for North Carolina on its opening possession. Colby Criswell. Making an adjustment. Informs his teammates. He's still got the football. He dives to the goal line and in. Criswell with the touchdown from a yard out. North Carolina in the end zone. First rushing TD of the season for Criswell. Atkins for the extra point. Tar Heels James march it right down the field and take a 7 0 lead. Former Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. Had a big drive. Run early on the drive at the end of the drive. Or more. Nice balance there in that opening drive. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo in his laid back ways, getting it done. <laughs> Not just with Sam Howell, but the young guys as well to start this one. Jacoby, nice job running the show. Curious to see how he'll mix in Drake May along with Criswell throughout the day. Criswell went three for three on the drive through the air as well. Here's Amir Anor. On the return for Wofford, and he gets wrestled to the artificial surface. 18 yards on the return. Okay, time for our keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford dealer with James Bates. Well, Tom, for the Terriers, dog will hunt. They just got to go out there and hunt. They've got to hunt down yardage. They've got to keep the ball. They've got to hunt down the football, force turnovers. The only way they're going to have a chance to win this game, I think, is to force a couple turnovers here today. And for North Carolina, enjoy this. Have a nice day. It's senior day. And, you, you know, do you love playing football? This this game that that all of us enjoy watching, and these guys are, are living a dream out here and coming off a tough, tough stretch. Three ranked teams in 13 days, a close loss over time on the road, cold, nasty pit, and, and they're playing better football right now. Go out and enjoy it. Your last time here in Chapel Hill for the seniors and last game at home for this football team. So yeah. have a nice one. Yeah, that game last Thursday and the loss at then number 21 Pitt, which scored in overtime on an 11-yard TD pass, and then North Carolina was stopped on its possession in the OT. This will be Nathan Walker, the senior, no gain. Chris Collins, 17 in Carolina Blue, on the stop for UNC. Peyton Derrick is the senior quarterback for the Terriers, but as Rebecca told you, they've used several different players at this position this year, James. Yeah, Jimmy Wyrick Weidrick and Derrick, that was the competition entering camp. Derrick started, it wasn't a great start, and then it was Wyrick's show. He got hurt against Kent State. Horston's also been in there, injured against Mercer, and then Peyton played against FIU, but then was sick two weeks ago, but had his best game as a Terrier last week, and here they'll move the chains on their first touch. Ryan Ingram gets the first down for Wofford to move those chains. Time for our impact players, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers with Wofford on offense, James. Well, not only did Peyton Derrick 
There you go. Have a big week last week. Alec Holt was impressive in the Citadel game. A, a close loss. One of many close losses for them. And number 44. Going to miss watching Jeremiah Gimmel go sideline to sideline and make plays wearing that 44 in the Carolina Blue. That's for sure. Here he is right on cue. Big man. Gimmel, the senior from Noonan, Georgia, on the tackle of Nathan Walker. Six yards on the play for Wofford. Gimmel had ten tackles and a sack to lead the team in that loss of Pitt last Thursday. Defensive coordinator Jay Bateman was telling us yesterday just the residual effect. Jeremiah Gimmel, those young players that have watched him prepare for these games, he's really become a professional in his, in his preparation, and that will linger on forever because the young guys has really set the tone for them. Derek hung on to it, maybe one. Taman Fox making the tackle for North Carolina. Now Wofford James also, as you mentioned, coming off a loss in overtime at the Citadel after leading 28-17 at halftime. They couldn't make it stand up and lost 45-44. Sent it into OT with a late field goal. Wofford went for two to try to win the game. In the OT, but it was an incomplete pass and the loss by a single point at the Citadel. On third down, Ingram's not going to get it. One is not enough. That's when you don't want to be the one on third down. You want to be the, the three or four on that. Nice penetration. Right there, immediately back into the backfield. Gemmel in on that tackle. Also in their defensive lineman, Miles Murphy. So Downs is the deep man at his 22-yard line, which here at Keenan Memorial Stadium is Carolina Blue to honor Charlie Choo Choo Justice, who wore number 22. Runner up for the Heisman twice. Roberts gets it away. Downs will let it bounce near the 35. Fielded on the hop. And dragged down just past the 30-yard line. 38 yards on the punt. The return from Downs was six. Carolina has the football back. Also has the lead. Seven. trying to deliver the ball to Downs and company here for this second drive of the afternoon. First one was impressive, like clockwork, marching right down the field. Well, Criswell went three for three through the air on the drive, James. Prior to that, he'd only thrown two passes all season and completed both of those. And we saw, we, we, he, needs, he needs us to call out all of his games. We saw both those passes against Georgia State beginning of the year. That was a win after the loss on the road at Virginia Tech when North Carolina started the year ranked number 10. This is out past the 45. Look at Chandler. Trying to get the most of senior day here at Keenan Memorial Stadium. He had 44 yards on the first drive. He just got 19, James. Yeah, you mentioned what a big get he was, the transfer from Tennessee. Look at him, little stutter step, changing speeds, and then hitting that boost button. And this is a big one. Remember, of course, the, the, the two special running backs they lost off of last year's team, and he just keeps on coming. Just inside the 40-yard line of Wofford at a first down, 11 yards for Chandler. And he has gone over 1,000 yards rushing this season for the Tar Heels. 31st player to do it in school history for Ty Chandler, the graduate student from Nashville, Tennessee. Didn't take long, did it? It's pretty good afternoon. We're still got a little bit of meat on the bone in the first quarter for number 19. Carolina's been strong at home this season. Five and one overall. Four and one in conference play for the Tar Heels on their home field. Two yards for Chandler. Rhett Russell. Tackle for the Wofford Terriers out of the Southern Conference. They've been a consistent power, although this season below their normal championship standard. SoCon champs 2017, 18, and 19. 
Nine. 18 and 19 under yeah. Coach Conklin. 19, they had nine wins, eight wins last year. So this isn't the norm, the one win season. They've had 30 injuries as this one sails high over the wide open receiver. Looking away at DJ Jones. Back up running back. But yeah, this is a back to Wofford. 30 season ending injuries. We told you about a couple there at the quarterback position alone. So a tough run and trying to get things turned right back around where they belong. Josh Conklin Fields, who's there on his second stint, was an, a defensive coordinator there. ACC fans might know the name from his days as defensive coordinator with Narduzzi up at Pitt. Criswell up the middle, down the hash marks and toward the 10 yard line. Creative moves, De Roberto on the tackle. He's got him down to the 11 yard line with a 26 yard run. Ran out of his shoe. Designed quarterback run right here. Nice job, put that foot in the ground and go behind Big Q Johnson. The center leading the way. Nice conversion there, and again, good play call. So knocking on the door one more time, these Tar Heels. Now they can get a first down now, down near the one yard line or so. Chandler trying to stretch it out. There is no gain for Chandler. Cameron Woolery. No relation to Chuck <laughs> that I know of. But it's, you don't hear that last name a lot, do you? No. Nice play from Woolery, the sophomore from Orland Park, Illinois. As North Carolina threatens for a second time in as many drives. And you can see down by the one, they can get another first down. Criswell took it in from a yard away in their opening possession. Chandler. Bouncing off a couple of Terriers. Camden Gray able to pull him down two yards. Sam Howell last game against Pitt threw for 296 yards and a couple of TD passes and ran for one, but took some hard hits. So Coach Mac Brown and the coaching staff elected to keep him on the sidelines. He was recognized prior to the game. Some of those hard hits too early. Really it started in a hole, came roaring back. That's one thing about Matt Brown's team this year. They, they haven't folded up the tent. Came fighting back and made a game of it, that's for sure. Ball comes out at the two yard line to Downs, but it's being ruled an incomplete pass to Josh Downs. Good job there by Wofford to stand. Well, bend but don't break on that drive. A couple good plays on first and second down and low ball and more good hustle. Gosh, that's that's almost a football move. I don't think they'll take a look at it, but that was was close if it didn't. I was watching more of the catch if it hit the grass, but nonetheless, it's three for UNC. 26 yards, Grayson Atkins. The graduate student, the transfer from Furman, knocks it through. And North Carolina has harvested 10 points from its opening two drives. Well, you mentioned Pat Narduzzi, James, and the Pitt Panthers. Well, they're just a win away from representing the Coastal Division. As we take a look at the standings with Wake Forest, which is at Clemson. Should the Demon Digs win, they will represent the Atlantic in the title game. Yeah, not, not quite as murky as it has been at times uh, in the Coastal. Pitt controlling their own business, and, and we actually, we were up there uh, for one of those two losses, hard to believe, against Western Michigan up at Pittsburgh. But playing some outstanding football, Kenny Pickett. Well, that's pretty much the way it goes, isn't it, in college football? If you have a stud that can throw it around the yard like Kenny Pickett, like Sam Hartman at Wake Forest, and like Sam Howell has done so many times here at North Carolina, give yourself a pretty good chance to win some football games. Now Kenny Pickett now the all-time leading passer in yardage in Pitt history. The return from Anor out past the 30-yard line. Pitt was also in the title game back in 2018, James. 
And we talked about that Wake Clemson game. The Clemson Tigers have won 33 games in a row at home. Wake Forest won the ACC title game back in 06. They haven't won at Clemson since 1998. Wake and Clemson playing right now on Dabo Sweeney's birthday. And the Tigers, a little birthday gift, three to nothing. Trying to get a win for their coach. They still have a chance to win the Atlantic as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, a lot can happen, but but that one thing is is certain is those two teams control their own destiny. By the way, Clemson has won that title game six years in a row, also. So they certainly want to try to get back. They would need to beat Wake and have Wake also lose in the last game of the season. That's on the road at Boston College, and Clemson would have to beat South Carolina in Columbia as well. Well. That doesn't affect the standings necessarily, but they'd be watching that Wake Forest BC game. And as good as Wake has been this year, uh, that's a tough out, especially with Phil Dracovic back playing for BC up there. So Broussard on the carry. Yeah, we saw Dracovic last week. How about three rushing TDs from the big man for the Eagles as Boston College went to Georgia Tech to get a close win. Nice job getting up and going, Kevin Hester. Defensive tackle for the heels. Big man, 305, just a sophomore. Looking pretty good. Tackle for a loss there. Second down and 11 for the Terriers. Just a minute and a half to go in our first quarter. Broussard, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. About three yards for him, Cedric Gray on the stop. Cameron Kelly also there, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. See what Coach Conklin decides here on this third and eight play for the Terriers. They try to go to the air. This pass too far and incomplete. That's going to bring up fourth down. Alec Holt, closest Wofford receiver in the vicinity. Desmond Evans had some pressure on the quarterback. And so a punting situation for the Terriers. With Roberts out to punt. Downs will receive the punt from Roberts. Ten nothing Tar Heels. We're inside of a minute to go in our first quarter. Final home game of the year. Downs fields it. Gets fenced in and dropped at the 17. 38 yards on the punt. There was no return from Downs. Walker made the special teams tackle for Wofford. Mac Brown special teams have been pretty good this season and watching them. Try to get after that that punt the first two times Wofford has punted today. They've been close, and what's been impressive is they've been very aggressive and very close to blocking it to the point to where they may get one before the day's up. But they also know where to go, what not, to come under control when you absolutely have to be. You can't rough that punter and give them a freebie, and they've done an excellent job of putting on the pressure but pulling up when they need to. Jones. Mac Brown has been in coaching approaching 45 years. This is the first time he's coached against Wofford. We were talking earlier. It's, it's hard to believe that it's the first time in all these years that North Carolina and Wofford have met up. It is odd considering the campuses, as we mentioned, about 200 miles separated. Wofford and Spartanburg, South Carolina. That is complete to Downs. Spins goes up field to the 32 yard line. First down yardage. 264 career victories for Mac Brown and watching perhaps the future at that position of quarterback, James. Yeah, well, he's looked good running it and showing you right there. He can spin it, he can make all the throws. And he's hitting a pretty good target there. And Josh Downs just threading that needle, and that'll take us to the end of quarter number one. They're honoring the seniors and the grad students at Keenan Memorial Stadium. D will not return, guys. Yeah, that's unfortunate, Rebecca. There's a flag there done here on the play, and you know, and 
injuries in this game. That's one of the reasons Matt Brown said I'll, I'll let him go ahead and hold him. Offense, number 72. 10 yard penalty, first down. Penalties have started to become a little bit of an issue. Weren't so much in the beginning of the year for North Carolina, but some big ones. So just an inopportune times here as of late. Look at that, almost eight yards per play for Criswell and North Carolina. But just to finish up, Rebecca, you know, that's what Coach Mac Brown, that was that was what he was worried about, putting Sam Howell out there for a play or two so they could send him off. Au revoir, Pee Wee, au revoir, Simone. But he didn't want him to get hurt on the first play. Unfortunately, that's what happened to Conley, and hopefully he's okay. Downs has a first down. Eamon Worry on the tackle, 11 yards on the pass to Downs. He's already got six tackles, Eamon Worry. You know what that's from, by the way, Tom? Au revoir, Pee Wee. Au revoir, I, I did. It, it sounded French to me. But. <laughs> well, it's Pee Wee's big adventure. Yeah, of Pee course. Pee Wee <laughs> There's no basement in the element. You got to pay attention when you're working with Bates. I know firsthand. Downs pulled down. And that's even Worry again playing some inspired defensive football on the Wofford side of the field. Well, even Worry, that's, that's tackle number six here early in this game. Okachi all over the football field there from a safety spot. We told you that Criswell was just two of two for the entire season, five of seven so far. And Ty Chandler, 78 yards on 10 carries. Tar Heels look to the air again. Criswell airs it out, and it's just beyond his intended receiver. Justin Olsen, 83 down that sideline. Good job, Anur. Turn that cushion breaks down. Maybe got away with a little bit of a hold there. No flag thrown. And Moore and his brother both in the secondary. And first time today, the heels will have to punt it away. Ben Kiernan, the junior from Dublin, Ireland. First time today, as Jens mentioned. Low liner. KO over to grab it up that sideline in front of his own bench. The putt was 46 yards. The return. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, on the sidelines in our incredible, dedicated ACC football production crew with you from Chapel Hill. Certainly a tip of the cap to all the women and men who work behind the scenes, bringing you the pictures and sound all season long with ACC football. We're lucky enough to document it each and every Saturday. That's a first down run and more. Peyton Derrick taking off. Resourceful all the way to the Carolina side of the 50. Gray made the tackle 28 yards on the run. Absolutely. And it, this isn't designed. The pressure got there. Decided to tuck it and go and showing you he's got a little bit of wheels. Peyton Derrick playing his last collegiate football game here today. The transfer from App State. Nice pickup into Tar Heel territory. Did have a rushing touchdown in the OT loss against the Citadel last week. This is another big chunk play. That's inside the 30 for Wofford. They got 16 legged on the run. There you go. This is what I'm talking about. The dog will hunt key to the game. Look at the big boys getting up and moving. Getting guys like Cedric Gray cut off on the next level. Excellent job by that offensive line. Balls at the 27 yard line of North Carolina. Derrick also threw four TD passes to tie a school record a week ago. He was 7 of 12 for 181 yards through the air. They'll go leg it again. Trying to stretch it out. He won't do it. Nice job by Geo Biggers to fight to get that outside shoulder. Free and out there. Turning back in if needed, but. A lot of times you turn that back in and your buddies can make the tackle. Gio just went ahead and made it himself. Virginia from Woodbridge, Virginia. Loss of two on the play for Wofford. Ball at the 29-yard line of North Carolina. Terriers trailing 10-0 in the second quarter. Peyton Derrick, the senior quarterback from Conway, South Carolina. Handing off to Ingram. 
finally dragged down after a two yard gain. Rucker on the stop, North Carolina. Well, Rucker and company, good job here on first down, second down. And these are the situations, as you see, Wofford just one of three on third down conversions here today. And a tough one they're looking at right now with the third and ten. Either, these are the situations where you force turnovers, third and longs, play good defense on first and second down. And that's one thing that's been lacking here for this Tar Heel defense. They've been getting to the quarterback a little bit better. They haven't been forcing the amount of turnovers that they'd like. Let's see if they put the pressure on here for Jay Bateman. Third and ten. Derek hanging on to it. He's inside the 20 to the 18. Needed an extra yard to get to the 17. That was the line to gain Miles Murphy on the tackle after nine yards. A little bit of a run pass option. And you know, it, it, Josh Conklin, he wants to base this off of a triple option, not, not the uh, cut. This is more of a, a gun option. Not the Paul Johnson type option there for many years at Georgia Tech, but on fourth down and short, they'll line it up to go for it here. Now a timeout taken by Wofford. So Coach Conklin wants to discuss this fourth and short. They need about a yard. They are 4 of 11 on 4th down this season. Winless in Southern Conference games this year for the first time in school history. Before we proceed, let's get a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project. With gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Hopefully you put off the raking and power blowing and all the other yard work to watch college football with us. You can do that later. Yeah, if you got the work so you don't right. need a rake. Those leaves, rake out. That's right. Those leaves aren't going anywhere. Just, just do it later. They're still yeah. falling. Maybe they go in your pool. Maybe they don't. That's all right. Enjoy college football with us this afternoon. Everybody do your job here defensively. Everybody don't try to be your 1-11th of the defense here. Wofford, first down inside the 15. It's Ingram right up the middle. He got five, only needed one. Nice job by that offensive line up front. The Terriers with a good push, and Ingram taking advantage. The sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, moving those chains. Fresh set of downs for the Terriers, trying to put some points on the board here. Both of these teams average over 200 yards rushing per game. For Wofford, their fourth in the conference, 13 in the football championship subdivision. Third first down on the drive for the Terriers. They won't get much here with Nathan Walker, the senior ball carrier. Got two. Tamari Fox. Raymond Vohasek involved in the tackle for North Carolina. And Matt Brown, he made sure his team knew. This is a, Stam, a Samford team that scored 52 on Florida last week, beat Walford just 27-24 in a pretty close game. So he's got a football team coming in that, you know, it, it can happen there in the swamp. It can happen here in Keenan. you got a team that can come in and score some points, but the heels trying to get stingy down low and keep them out of the paint. Gimmel on the tackle. Yeah, that game against Sanford was October 16th at home for Coach Conklin and the Terriers at Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And Sanford made a field goal with 1.38 left in that game to win it 27-24 against Wofford. 1 of 4 on third down. They've had some success on this drive. Three first downs on the drive with the ball at the 10-yard line. They can get a first down at the three. Derek handing it off to Ingram, and he gets pushed back. What a surge by North Carolina. Now flags come out late, and it almost looked like, James, that Ingram wanted to toss that ball 
But there was too much pressure coming from the North Carolina defense for Hassock and Gray. Go Hassock there immediately. Otherwise, this play. play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 51. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Sometimes a little bit too much by 51. If I remember correctly, he had one of those against the Hokies in the opener. Just a little bit too aggressive. He, he's a scrappy guy, and you want some fight out of your players, but between the whistles, you give him a fresh set of downs. But you're absolutely right, Tom. That play was coming back the other way, and it, it looked like it was going to be successful. But great penetration right off the snap by Bo Hassett. Nixed it. So after the penalty, first and goal for Wofford and Peyton Derrick. Into the pile, Nathan Walker. 21 in white, gold, and black. See, that last play, Tom, is that's the kind of penalty that is just crushed in these, these huge moments here this season as of late. You know, the pit game, uh, the offsides, and uh, late in the game, and they just got to clean those things up. You know, it's, and and it's, it's experienced, older football players they just have to be smarter. Give a team like this another chance here deep in the red zone. 12 penalties for 104 yards in the loss at Pitt for North Carolina. Derek made a move. Couldn't get away at the five. Stumbles down near the four yard line. Came on Rucker, had a hold of him. Five yards, and Derek is still down. Peyton Derek clutching that left knee. Rolling around on the turf. So they're going to check on him. It's been such an adventure at quarterback for these poor Terriers. Four, five guys. Kyle Penix is the backup. He's played a little bit, but this is the best guy here. Leaf season is here. Exper Try to punch it in the end zone here and get some points on the board on this third and goal for the Terrier offense. Penix does have one passing TD this season. He's three of nine overall. Seeing action in his fourth game, as James mentioned. And they're going to work with three receivers to the near side. Third and goal for Wofford. One of five on third down in the game. And the 11th play of the drive for the Terriers. Pinnocks into the end zone for Wofford. Three yards away. And Kyle Pinnocks takes it in for the Terriers. Nice little play call. Defensively, though, you have to be alert when they line up three guys on one side of the field. They're doing that for a reason a lot of times. It's like when they'll go empty. you got to be aware of a quarterback run. You try to clear out the middle of defenders. And Wofford behind the new guy, the freshman Kyle Pinnix at quarterback. Nice read. Everybody washed down. And tripping on into the Carolina blue paint. It's 10 to 7. We're talking about closing. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Can I get a hand? First down and second down, which they were on that drive. Converted the fourth down and then ate it a little bit with the roughing the passer penalty. And Penix, one snap, one touchdown. First rushing, game. yeah, first rushing TD of his career. Had thrown the passing TD this TD this season in the three previous games he played in. One play, six points from three yards away. 6:22 to go in the second quarter. First all-time meeting, North Carolina and Wofford. Jacoby Criswell, quarterback for the Tar Heels. Sam Howell unable to go today. Upper body injury. Expected to play next Friday when North Carolina and NC State renew their rivalry. The 111th meeting between the teams. Jones rumbles up past the 30. He got six on the carry. Michael Mason on the stop as the clock continues to roll, approaching six minutes to go in the second quarter.
I hope Sam Howell's ready to go. That Friday night game, that'll be one heck of a matchup. Always is a great game. Just something about it this year is going to be extra special, I feel like. First down, close to the 40. Jones on the catch. And for more on Sam Howell, let's go down to the sidelines and Rebecca. Yeah, guys, I was over on the Tar Heel sideline just observing Sam Howe. He may not be playing today, but he's still heavily involved. Each time Jacoby Quizwell came over off the field, him and Sam Howe were sitting right next to each other. I had a chance to talk to Howe right before the game, and he said he told the players just to be calm and relax and enjoy the game. Be calm and relax, kind of like their offensive coordinator, Rebecca, Phil Longo, telling us, you know, I, they always come in the meeting room, I got my feet up. I've listened to country or, or reggae, and he, he credits Mike Leach and Cliff Kingsbury being around them and the way they, they handle their their quarterback rooms. And, you know, he said, if I if I were a linebacker coach, I'd, I'd be bouncing off the walls trying to get them to do the same thing. But I like my quarterbacks to be nice, even keeled, and relaxed. Sam Howe, a great leader down there, Rebecca, that's for sure. They're in good hands. That ball's in good hands as well, and all the way to the end zone for North Carolina. 38-yard run and a touchdown. British Brooks takes it in for North Carolina. So after Wofford had punched it in with a rushing TD from Pittix, British Brooks takes it the other way and the touchdown run of 38 yards. Atkins adds the extra point. British Brooks. Good job by the big guys up front. Brooks. Outside, nice blocking down the field. That's how those big his career second rushing TD of the season for Brooks. 38 yards to take him to the end zone and cap off a four play 75 yard drive that took 135. There's DJ so, Jones heading to the locker room who listed as that backup running back, and hopefully, he didn't get Wally Pip there. British Brooks run. Hopefully, DJ Jones is okay. The sophomore running back. Two carries for 10 yards in the game so far for Jones. North Carolina has the second best rushing attack in the ACC, led by Ty Chandler. Chandler, the leading rusher today, with 78 yards. Coming up at halftime, it's driven with Mac Brown, the legend. Highlights and stats from the first half and scores around the ACC. Two very important ones to keep an eye on. Wake Forest at Clemson and the Pitt Panthers trying to wrap up the Coastal Division. Probably won't today. see it, Tom, in, the, uh, in that shot in the driven piece on Mac Brown, but just know as he's answering those questions, he's got the sweetest... Sweetest Jordans on that you've ever seen. <laughs> Great shoe game from the head man here in Chapel Hill. Peyton Derrick has come back in at quarterback for the Terriers. He was clutching his left knee on that previous drive, finished off by the three yard run by Pinnock, his replacement. But Peyton Derrick has come back into the game. Pitt is hosting Virginia. It's 3 30 Eastern today. Heinz Field. Good to see Peyton Derrick back out there. There's Kyle Penix 15 back over on the sidelines. One and done, but it was a, a good one. A touchdown run for the Terriers, their only points. But Peyton Derrick playing his last game. You'd hate to see him go out with that injury like that. So good to have him back in there. Broussard has a first down for Wofford up past the 35 yard line to the 37 and seven yards on the carry. And we're inside of four minutes to go in the second quarter. Kevin Hester Jr. in on the tackle. Morrison as well. Trey Morrison, the senior from Norcross, Georgia. One of the 21 seniors and grads. And Sam Howell, honored prior to this game. Final home game of the year at Keenan Stadium for the Tar Heels. Always a lot of emotion in the building. And I'll ask you, James, that... Senior day moment for you down at the swamp. 
Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a great memory. You know, run out there and, and hug your mama and say goodbye to, to all those home fans. And, you know, a lot of football at that point in 96 left to be played in a lot of important games. But but I, that's a, a special place to me. And still to this day, we still live in Gainesville. And I go in there and think about, you know, those last last few ball plays in that stadium that meant so much to you. So without a doubt, a special day for all these seniors and some of the underclassmen that are on their way out. You're right, North Carolina has more football to play. As Gimmel made the tackle of Broussard and a loss of one, the Tar Heels will take on NC State next week. And that is in Raleigh up the road. North Carolina's won two in a row in that series. They had a great game back in 2018. Although the Wolfpack won it in overtime 34 28. We had a chance to call that game back in 2018. Two of six on third down for Wofford. Just over two minutes to go in our first half. Derek sliding past the 45 yard line. They're only going to give him the 45. Needed two more yards to get to the first down marker. He got three as Cedric Gray stopped his progress. And Gray's got to be careful in that situation. As soon as he begins that slide, he gives himself up. And a good job on the mark because he did begin that slide behind the 45. So here comes the punting unit. North Carolina's taking a timeout, James, with 2.05 on the clock. It Real quick before you read this, so North to show you how fast this game's going, Tom. The, the Clemson game, Wake Forest, Clemson was leading by 10 last night. They're just now starting the second quarter. We've got 205 left in the first half. This game's going. This game's going along. Yeah, you, you're right on that score. 10 nothing. Clemson has the lead. And speaking of games, how about next week on most of these ACC stations? The Miami Hurricanes coming to Durham to face the Duke Blue Devils. Our coverage begins at 12:30 Eastern. You want to check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Miami can still get a share of the Coastal, but because of the tiebreakers, cannot represent the Coastal in Charlotte in that title game. Duke coming off a tough loss on Thursday against visiting Louisville 62-22. And so that's the game we'll have for you to close out the season here on your regional sports networks and your ACC stations. This is Downs. He'll watch it bounce. He'll go near the 10-yard line. And they'll mark it at the nine. And 46 yards you, on the punt. They're getting close here, Tom. They, I wouldn't be shocked if they get one by the end of the day. Not, not quite as close as the, as the first two. But they've, they've been putting some pressure, and they've actually had the block on. And see if they can do something. Downs letting that ball roll, and it'll roll down inside the 10-yard line. And it's still Jacoby Criswell. Running the show in there for the Tar Heels at quarterback. So Brooks is the running back. Tar Heels with 169 yards on the ground in the first half. Although Criswell wants to throw it. Open man was Downs. Couldn't handle it. Wofford had a chance at that one as well. Eamon Worry. So from the nine, second and ten after the incompletion with 153 to go in the second quarter. You had to say we're moving right along, didn't you, Bates? <laughs> you had to say it. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I kid because I care. <laughs> from his goal line, Criswell, dangerous situation. Then gets rid of it and has the pass to Walston. The elusive nature of Criswell, the pass complete to Walson as Anderson made the tackle, 20 yards on the play. And Tom, there are a lot of guys out there with all the tools to be a good quarterback. But this right here, this is what makes a special quarterback, what makes a great quarterback. When things break down, creating and making things happen again. Case in point, up near the first down marker. When things kind of bail, he just bails out and makes things happen. Very crafty on the last play here, tucking it and going, getting what he can. 11 yards for a first down on the run by Griswell. Ball right at the 40-yard line. Griswell. 
You know, I think we had Boston College last week, Phil Dracovic being back, and Jeff Halfley talking about he gives us hope. He gives them hope because of those off-schedule plays, not what's called and how it's supposed to look, but how are, how, what's their demeanor? Do they panic when things break down, when things don't go their way? And we've seen it a couple times here for Jacoby Criswell. You know, Mac Brown has said, our best players are underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores. If we have a quarterback that can step, step up next year, we'll be a really good football team. Griswell has the time, goes over the middle, Downs reaching out for that one, makes the catch, Wofford's side of the 50. But then again, maybe he doesn't want me saying that, <laughs> because on our phone call, he said, you know what, we were overranked this year, and we're 5-5, five and five, and everybody's saying how bad we are. Tennessee, nobody expected anything out of them, and the Volunteers are 5-5, five and five, and everybody's talking about how great they are. So next year, going into the season, I'm going to tell everybody that'll listen, we're going to be horrible this year. <laughs> Five catches for 57 yards so far for Downs. Criswell improvising, now running, 40-yard line, and a spin. And he's got first down yardage. Down to the 36-yard line for Criswell. Beckley made the tackle. It's a player down right at midfield for Wofford. 55 is Cameron Woolery. Helped up by the training staff, but favoring that left leg. Wofford out of the football championship subdivision. Part of the playoffs from 2017 to 20 at that level. Left side of the screen. There's the defensive end. Wolverine. Well, Gosh, he, you know what? Just, just in the process of the rush, Hopefully that isn't an Achilles or a calf type of injury, or hopefully it's just a cramp. It seems like something like that. Griswell to the end zone. The receiver stumbled down. That was Green. Got tangled up with the defender. The booze rained down, but the play is incomplete. No flags. The ball thrown out of the back of the end zone. A little bit too strong, maybe calling it uncatchable and it was yeah feet got tangled it's good no flag but the ball going out of the back of the end zone right there and Wofford's going to take a timeout here with 21 seconds the defender was Amir Anor on Antoine Green Criswell by the way the leading rusher now in the game 10 carries 78 yards it'll be second and 10 for North Carolina Peyton Derrick the quarterback for Wofford the leading rusher on their side He's got 46 yards. Mac Brown, what a great conversation we had yesterday with Mac Brown. Yes, maybe he's been in coaching for over 40 years, but James, he says he gets something out of every single game. You learn a little bit more about yourself, your team, and the game on the sidelines. It, it's always such a treat. It's, you know, it, fortunate, you know, in, in our profession to spend some time with guys like Mac Brown, David Cutcliffe over at Duke. It's you always take so much out of there. You, and you get carpal tunnel from writing everything down that they say, <laughs> every single word. Nice time out for Conklin to make sure his troops know how big these last 21 seconds are. They got to make a stop though. Griswell pass inside the 20. That's on time and on schedule for a first down to Downs. <laughs> Offensive line continues to do a great job for Criswell, but it also, you know, not tight coverage there, but they a couple times when the secondary's been asked to run with these receivers for a long time. They've hung in there. Got to find a way to put a little bit of pressure on these UNC quarterbacks. Six catches. Yeah, six catches for downs in the game. That's 88 for the season, best in the conference. Criswell was looking his way initially, now comes back the other way. There is no receiver in that region. Closest one was Antoine Green. He was in the end zone. You see, here, here's a good example. Nobody sniffs Criswell, but he's still forced to get rid of that football, throw it out of bounds because of the tight coverage down the field. So That's eight seconds on the clock with two timeouts for North Carolina James on second and ten. 
course, you got to be careful penalties here in this, the end of the first half or second half. Penalty can cost you a 10 second knockoff, and the quarter's done. Criswell, pressure coming, got rid of it. Back corner of the end zone, too far. Justin Olsen was the receiver. We've got a second left. And so North Carolina going to roll out the field goal unit, try to go three for three in the red zone today. They're one of the better teams in the red zone this season, James. Third in the conference. Well, a nice stop for Wofford. Remember, they'll get the ball to start the second half as they won the toss and deferred. And that was an injury to Conley. First play of this football game on the return. So be within two scores here and get the ball first in the second half will be big for him. The field goal attempt from 34 yards away. And it is good on the final play of the first half by Grayson Atkins, two for two. In the first half, he also made from 27 yards away to add three for North Carolina as it heads to the locker room with the 20 to seven lead. Well, coach, enjoyed this one. G good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Rebecca, Josh Conklin, defensive-minded head coach, defensive coordinator at Pitt before taking that Wofford job and look for his offense to move the football down the field, but I think they can get a turnover or two in the second half. That could really make things interesting. Maybe a little bit of help. Had a tough time slowing down this Tar Heel offense in the first half. Wofford will have the ball to start the second half from Keenan Memorial Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Tom Wormy, James Bates, you just heard from Rebecca Fiorentino joining us on the sidelines and our incredible, outstanding, talented production crew with you for ACC football. We appreciate your viewership all season long. One more week to go after this one, Bates. It'll be Miami and Duke next week for us to close like, out the season. It's like a Thanksgiving sandwich. Thanksgiving in between. That is a 12:30 Eastern start in Durham, at Wallace Wade Stadium. Ingram on the carry for five yards to get us rolling in the third quarter. Wake Forest is making it interesting, James. We just got an update there. 17-10 now as Wake scored, and the numbers for Peyton Derrick, most of it on the ground in that first half, and came back from injury too. Good to see. Yeah. You know, and, and Conklin says he, he wants to be a, a triple option minded football team out of that shotgun, but he wants to be able to throw the football is the ideal to, way to run things here. And so doing it on the ground, just what the head coach ordered. They'll go to the ground again. Derek, plenty of room sliding near midfield. First down and more, 17 yards. Peyton Derek, the senior on the carry. No, and let's not forget, th this is a Wofford bunch. Uh, you mentioned earlier, a couple hundred miles away from Chapel Hill. And guys that, you know, trying to show teams like North Carolina, hey, you should have recruited me. A little chip on the shoulder type of mentality, a terrier attitude, if you will, to, you know, just yip and yip and yip and nip and nip and nip and, <laughs> and trying to chip away and doing just that here on this opening drive in the second half. Pretty good first plays here in the second half for this offense. Derek with a play fake, and that one is intercepted. McMichael on the pick for North Carolina. There's a player down for North Carolina. That's Gimmel moving slowly. Michael had nine yards on the return after the pick, James. Hopefully 44 is okay. How about the concentration? McMichael off the hands of the receiver. I believe that was Alec Holt right through his hands. And, you know, Alec Holt, though, you know, you can be upset, but you got to continue playing. And teammates, they're bringing him down. But we saw, and I believe it was Georgia Tech earlier, the ball went through an offensive guy's hands, intercepted, and a game-saving tackle by P.J. Harris after the turnover. Well, Drake May is into the game at quarterback. He hands it off to British Brooks, who drags some Terriers with him. Down close to the 35-yard line. He's inside the 40, 38-yard line, 17 yards, Brooks. Now taking advantage of this opportunity, opportunities for Drake May 
and British Brooks both. DJ Jones has left the game. You saw him going into the locker room earlier, and we got word he will not return a lower body injury for the sophomore DJ Jones. May seeing his first action of the season. Hands it off again. It's the same guy. It's Brooks. And that's nine yards on that carry, just inside the 30-yard line. Sure helps these young quarterbacks out when you've got guys able to run the football. Here's Drake May, and it was Ty Chandler for Jacoby Criswell in the first half. And here it's British Brooks' little play pass. Downs. 25-yard line and a first down. Hamden Gray on the tackle. Seven catches in the game for Downs. He's a 1,000-yard receiver this year for North Carolina. Downs started in opening week against Virginia Tech. Had eight catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown. Hadn't let up. May again. Near the 15. It is on the money. Justin Olsen, first down North Carolina. He beat Anor defensively. Nice job on the timing round. Back shoulder throw. Showing you that whip out to Olsen. And it's been the backup reps as they go into the CPI security red zone. Three for three in the red zone today. May hands that one off. This is Brooks. All the way to the end zone for North Carolina and his second rushing TD. Four carries, 78 yards, and two touchdowns. British Brooks. Runs of 38 and 14 on that previous play. To get it in the end zone for the Tar Heels. Grayson Atkins has the extra point. Two if by C, one if by land. Like that lamp again. The British are coming 27 to 7. Good job blocking by Olsen down the Illinois.gov. Your health coverage starts here. Meet Tempo. The home gym with a built-in personal game. Of course, back in 1776, the United States declared its independence, and then the Treaty of Paris in 1783, official independence for the United States, since we're talking about the British and all that other good stuff. James, there's your history lesson. I think that's going to be ringing tonight. Yes. And all lit up in Carolina blue, as is the tradition that Mac Brown brought to town in his second stint. As the head coach, they'll light up the Moorhead Patterson Bell Tower on the campus. Just beyond the stands, off to the left of our broadcast position. Beautiful Saturday afternoon, temps in the high 40s. Bright sunshine, unless you're standing on the North Carolina sideline of the field. Completely in shade as Nathan Walker carries it for five yards. Lucky I have statistician Freddie Kiger to help me out with all those dates. The resident historian here on the Chapel Hill campus. Our spotter is Skip McMillan, providing the cafe lattes this afternoon. <laughs> and our incredible staff, as I've mentioned, this would not happen without the efforts of so many people who start working well before kickoff on Saturdays. Three backs, Tom, that we've seen run the football hard behind this hard-working offensive line. Here's Walker, Bruce Sard, Ryan Ingram. And part of the reason why this game has gone fast, they just eat away at that clock, methodically just trying to plug away. It's you know, primarily running the football, but having some success with it as well. Like Conklin said, his team's not going to give up, going to continue to fight. Try to keep that bell from ringing here tonight. They've got a little work to do, down 20. Not surprisingly, Wofford, one of the top rushing teams in the football championship subdivision. They're 13th in FCS. They're up to 141. North Carolina is second in the ACC in rushing. And we'll see what the Tar Heels have done. Most of that, Chandler and Brooks. Also Criswell, 
rushing the football for the Tar Heels this afternoon. Holt. Six yards on the play for the Terriers. Three and 13 all time against the ACC. Although those victories, all three of them were against Clemson, but that was back in the 1920s when Clemson was actually part of the Southern Conference. Oh, all right. In fact, the last win against the current ACC opponent, 1926, against the Clemson Tigers, three to nothing. Again, the Clemson Tigers were part of the Southern Conference, as a lot of teams were, and have now moved on to the ACC and other conferences. Flags on the play. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, that's unfortunate for Wofford. They have played a clean game, really, for the most part here today. And one thing you have to do, you have to take care of that football, just turn one over, and that's the first flag thrown against Wofford and a costly one. Lining up for a third down and short. North Carolina defensively, they make a big shift all together. And Wofford not ready for it. They all jump offside. So here's a third down and seven now. Derek, nowhere to go, swallowed up. There is no gain on the play. Fourth down for the Terriers. Ritzy in there on the stop, but a good job by that whole defensive front for Carolina to just stretch it and not give any daylight at all for Peyton Derrick to get off the football field. So Downs is the deep man standing near his 21-yard line. Roberts to punt it away. Flags before the snap. Marcus Woods is our referee. False start. Offense, number 31. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. It's Eli Purcell. Knoxville Farragut guy. Bill Bates went to Knoxville Farragut. Tennessee volunteer and Dallas Cowboy back in the day. Mm, Again, <laughs> pressure on that punt block from North Carolina. Downs is going to let it bounce. And that'll stop at about the 16-yard line. 50 yards on the punt. Touchdowns for British Brooks have been thanks in large part to the blocking by the receivers down the field. First one was Antoine Green. This one was Olsen. And, you know, the British are coming. It reminds me of British Knights. Remember the shoe in the 80s, early 90s, British Knights? Cool Modi wore them. Well, all those suckers who thought I could only rock beats, <laughs> but never rock in crowds, but never rock records. How you like me now? How you like me now? British Brooks getting an opportunity here today. You saw Ty Chandler. They, you, you tell they, they want him to go over that 1,000-yard mark for the season. Let's rest him up for NC State on Friday. Then we thought it was going to be the DJ Jones show, but DJ Jones injured lower body injury. Won't be back in this game. So British Brooks taking over. And he's done a fine job, and let's see how Drake May, second quarterback in this game, does on this drop. Caleb Hood on the carry. That's number four for North Carolina, the freshman, Rockingham, North Carolina. Brooks has two rushing TDs in the game. Criswell has one. He has given way to Drake May. Incredible athletic lineage. Father Mark was a quarterback here at North Carolina in the mid-80s. Brother Luke May won a basketball national championship as well here at North Carolina. It was back in 2017. Flags are out. This would be a face mask. And, well, and keep it going. His brother Colin won a College World Series with Kevin O'Sullivan and the Florida Gators that same year, if I'm not mistaken, that Carolina won the basketball national championship. 2017. Oh, dear. Offense, number 52, 10-yard penalty, second down. There's your hold. Adorno 
was 52. Third penalty on North Carolina. 7-19 and rolling in the third quarter. Tar Heels up 27-7. This is May galloping up the middle. All right. Okay. <laughs> up to the 30-yard line and 18 yards. Drake May. Well, just like Criswell a couple times. Nothing there. Let me tuck it and get what I can. And what I can is a whole lot right up the gut of this Wofford defense. Out there in coverage, it's thinned out. And, and just to finish up with the family, his mom went to UNC. She was a great basketball player in high school. His brother, Bo, is a student here at North Carolina. May extending the play. Now he cradles it and gets pulled down. T.J. Neal, zero for Wofford. It's a negative play for Carolina, loss of four. And the carry by May. Yeah, and that's, you know, be an interesting battle. And a, a good problem to have there in spring ball is Sam Howe. It sure looks like on his way to the NFL where it will be a first-round draft pick. Not playing today if you're joining us late. May's pass caught by Downs. Even Worry makes the tackle. Eight catches for Downs. Ninth straight game with eight catches or more. Protection there again, just like Criswell in the first half. Drake May, plenty of time. Let Downs clear it out. So a third down and five. Coming up now for the Tar Heels. Let's see if Wofford can get off the field. May tries the other side. This one is caught. J.J. Jones, the freshman. Tar Heels think they have a first down, and the officials agree. Excellent job to fight by J.J. Jones, because initially he comes back to the 39-yard line and makes that catch. If he goes down and doesn't fight to stretch that ball over the 40-yard line, it'll be a fourth down. Great effort by Jones. Five receiver set. May's going to run it <laughs> right up the middle. He knows his alleys all the way to a first down inside the 45. 15 yards on the run, Drake May. First action this season, making the most of it, James. Designed run again here. You know, it's, it's funny, the similarities in the way this offense has been called and, and, and the, the momentum and the rhythm that Phil Longo has gotten both quarterbacks into. It's almost like here's the play sheet for six, and it's going to be more of the same for 10. And it's similar situations in their sessions in the football game. Driving the football right now. Hood runs it. So Hood takes it for six yards. We're also keeping an eye on number 11 in Carolina Blue. Josh Downs needs 25 yards to set a single season record for receiving. So keep an eye on Downs. The numbers right now, eight catches for 89 yards. But again, he's trying to run down Hakeem Nix who set the record in 2008 with 1,222 yards receiving. So we'll keep an eye on that. That was an incomplete pass as they were looking for downs. Almost off the dribble. <laughs> it, it was close to being backwards, and that were the case. He could have kept going. There you see his day-to-day. -day. Eight catches, 89 yards, and... Wow. Pretty big feet. We, we, Sam Howell, and as far as quarterbacks go, he owns just about every record out there in the UNC books. And one of his teammates, Downs, trying to get a big one here today as well. That is caught near the sideline and a first down. J.J. Jones just picked it off the turf. Jones up top. You know, it, again, the, the timing. These are nice timing routes that you've seen. A great job of securing that football, not letting it hit the turf. But Drake May, Jacoby Criswell, 
They've split the backup reps. You know, obviously, the lion's share have gone to Sam Howell, the first string reps, getting ready for the opponent each weekend. But when it comes to backup reps, second string quarterback reps, they split them. May to the goal line, just knocked away at the last moment. J.J. Jones, defended by Damian Curtis, and knocked away and incomplete. Uh, this ball is going to be a touchdown, if not for the hustle to fight back and get bit in the picture. Actually, I, I beg your pardon. Looks like Jones was coming. Ball was coming out of his hands. Good job to fight by the defensive back. Make sure it gets knocked away. So here's your second and ten. Then. The eleventh play of the drive. Hood gets the handoff, and the Terriers were waiting for him. That's a loss of three. You want to make sure you stay with us after the third quarter for the fourth, presented by CPI Security. James Bates is a star of our show, and you'll see him in the fourth. Maybe you won't see him. <laughs> Maybe you just hear him. You better be here. I'll be here. All right. You might not see him. Two and a half minutes to go in our quarter. Penalty markers. Referee Marcus Woods in the white hat. Outside, defense, number 91. Jumping the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five yard penalty, third down. So they marked the football at the 27 yard line as Garnett was offside. Lined up in the neutral zone. Third down for Maine, Carolina. Trying to run to get it with Brooks. Second effort. He needed the 19. They're going to mark him at the 20. And he got seven. Might be just a little bit short. May look into the sidelines for some direction. Yeah, they'll go for it here. It's you know, no shame in trying to get these reps for these young backs, young quarterbacks on the fourth down and shorts to a 27-7 football game. Six of 14 on the season on fourth down, and that was Brooks. He dragged a dragged rather a would-be tackler down to the 19 for the first down, three yards. Camden Gray went for the ride. Well, Gray's back there to make the hit. It's just the want to of Brooks. Brooks is and putting on a little bit of a show here today. That time they needed him on fourth down. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was going to be dropped for a loss, perhaps. But dragging that defender and moving those chains, keeping this drive alive as we near the end of the third quarter. May through the progression. Throws on the run. Flags are out on the play. Antoine Green was the receiver in the end zone, and Donovan Anderson in coverage for Wofford penalty markers. And Anderson's just got to snap that head around. Pass the defense. Defense, number 20. 15 yard penalty. But again, it's just so tough when you have absolutely no pressure on these quarterbacks to ask these DBs to run with these speedy receivers all over the football field. Look at that coverage. You know, again, the receiver, those eyes get big. Those eyes get big. The, the changes his whole demeanor. Then you're in position like that. You know, trust that training and whip that head around. He turns that head around, and not only does he not get a flag, but maybe even ends up with the football. Four for four in the red zone of the game for North Carolina. With three TDs and a field goal. Brooks is the back. He won't get it. May throws it into the end zone. And caught for the touchdown. Kamari Morales. TD. North Carolina. And Drake May with his first touchdown toss. A four-yard play for the TD to Morales, James. Nice play-action pass. A, a nice play all together. 
you know, the, the first look as he goes through his progressions, double covered on his, uh, his first option. So he dumps it right down to Kamari, Kamari Morales, the sophomore from Lincoln High School over there near Tallahassee in Florida's panhandle. 84 yards, Morales has his fifth receiving TD of the season and May found him from four yards away. Yeah, fourth and short conversion there in the middle of it all by British Brooks to keep it going. And the youngsters getting some action, getting lathered up here today. They hadn't played a whole lot behind the big Sam Howe. We haven't had many situations. This is just Drake May's third game, his first touchdown pass. Talking it over with the junior quarterback who they hope will have. Healed up and be ready to go on Friday night against NC State. All right, let's get a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. 34-7, North Carolina, 55 seconds to go in our third quarter. Tar Heels have been pretty dominant against the football championship subdivision since 1980. They're 27-1 against FCS opponents. That loss, 99 against Furman. Played Western Carolina last year, the only non-ACC opponent in beat. The Catamounts, 49-9, last SOCON opponent for North Carolina. Should definitely mention that Wofford, in their last 23 games against the football bowl subdivision, James, 1-22. And that win at Louisiana Monroe in 2000, they won 24 to six under head coach Mike Ayers, the legendary head coach in Spartanburg, South Carolina at Wofford College. Mike Ayers was the head coach for 30 years at Wofford. Michael Frazier, former teammate of mine at Sevier County High School in East Tennessee was on that team. Wofford Terrier in his playing days with the linebacker. Josh Conklin, previously an assistant at Wofford from 07 to 09 before taking over the program four years ago. Nothing there. That's a big pile up at the 30 and a loss of three. Ryan Ingram went down. Raymond Vohasek, 51. <laughs> oh, come on. We got to see it. We got to see it. Hold on to it if we got to go. We got. Derek, complete Holt. First down near the 45-yard line, up to the 47 for Alec Holt, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, and 17 yards. Opening moments of our fourth quarter with North Carolina in front, 34 to seven. Solid gain on first down. Walker to the North Carolina side of the 50 as we go down to Rebecca. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll get back to Rebecca in just a moment. Josh Conklin told Rebecca at halftime that this is a team that won't give up. They continue to fight here on offense and powering forward looks to be close to a first down. Let's try it again. Rebecca, you got us? Yeah, guys, Peyton comes from a long line of quarterbacks. His father played quarterback in high school, but then came to Wofford and they had the wishbone offense, so he switched over to tight end. His brother played quarterback at Furman. So for the three of them, football has been the topic of conversation for as long as they can remember. And for Peyton, if it wasn't him, it was his brother, his dad. They talk about it all the time, what scheme or what happened on this play. So this is his last college football game. He doesn't know what he's going to talk about after that. Thanksgiving's coming up. Doesn't know what the conversation's going to be <laughs> at Thanksgiving. But, you know, playing quarterback, 
doesn't know what he's going to do anymore without that family tie. So that, that's been the topic of conversation for most meals for that family. I'll say, and well, his offense getting a first down on the ground that time, Rebecca. And I guess when it's pretty much a done deal that you're going to be a football player, probably a quarterback, you might as well give him a good quarterback name like Peyton, right? He runs a little bit better than Peyton Manning does, though, that's for sure. <laughs> Ooh, okay. No, he does. <laughs> Sounds like the discussions around the Bates household around Thanksgiving. <laughs> a lot of football talk. North Carolina is going to spend the day after Thanksgiving in Raleigh against NC State. There, there's Rohasek. Again, again, truck, I'm calling for that last play, please. Uh, can we see it at some point? <laughs> because Ray Rohasek, there he is on another stop, but earlier. He ran through a blocker and ran him right into the running back. He's had some big plays here in this game. His last home game as a Tar Heel. Here it is. All right. Ask, you shall receive. Right there in the middle. Look at him walk his blocker. Boom! I mean, that's that's some impressive power by 51 right there. Stands his blocker, would-be blocker up, and right back into the lap of the running back. Do you, do you still get credit for the tackle if you force the Wofford player into his you teammate should, and the ball carrier? You should get double credit. Look at it. There it is again. Bam. I mean, that, that, that makes the strength coaches, that, that makes the whole strength staff proud right there. When you get one of your guys, it's just that pop and that power, and then use that leg drive. We're going to miss him around here. Great work by our production team. Ninth play of the drive coming up for Hasek. 6'3", 300, senior from McHenry, Illinois, playing his final game in the Tar Heel uniform. That is a first down walker to the 30-yard line. He got six on the play for Wofford. The lone TD for Wofford came in the second quarter. Kyle Pinnix, who's been in the game for one play, took it in from three yards away in a rushing TD for Pinnix. Just marching on down the field and, you know, we're batting Rohasek on the back, but it's, you know, too many times in these you know, short yardage situations where they've had to have it. You know, Wofford is figuring out a way to just get enough punch, move those chains, and hear another fresh set of downs. Tar Heels do have an interception in the game from McMichael. They're 11th of the season to lead the ACC. I think someone predicted an interception by the Tar Heels prior to the start of this game, James. Even though Wofford hardly ever throws the ball. Yeah. But, I'm two for two, baby. But but that's, you know, no, no, no. You're, okay, now listen, I give you a lot of credit for your Jameer Gibbs. Uh, you. Before the game, Georgia Tech last week, you said he's going to run a touchdown, a kickoff back for a touchdown. 98 yards. Hey, and, and that's impressive. But that's almost like saying, yeah, you know, Wofford's going to convert 50% of their third down. It's a... Uh, you know, small I mean, victories. Don't throw it a lot. Small victories, James. You did say it, though. Yes, you did. Terriers run it. Derek, 20 yard line, and that should be good enough for a first down. Six yards. Wofford doing a lot of good things during a season where they have struggled mightily at 1 and 9 and 0 and 8 in conference play. You know, so many injuries. You know, even when, even when Peyton Derrick was healthy, he missed a game, got sick uh, against Western Carolina. He, he just got the flu and had to miss a game that weekend. So it's it's been tough to keep these guys out there and to keep them healthy and keep them fighting. And as we mentioned earlier, this has been a it's been a winning football team the last couple of years prior to this season. Just one win on this year. Look out! They got a touchdown here. This is Ingram to the end zone, 19 yards. That's a Terrier touchdown. Second TD on the ground in the game for the Terriers. And once again, this drive goes almost seven minutes. So Walker Gliarmus, whose father Lee was a kicker here at North Carolina in the mid 80s to add the extra point. With 9.04 on the game clock. 
Walker Gliarmus, extra point. James Ryan Ingram, 19 yards. Yeah. Louisville. And Miami also in action today. That's at 7.30 tonight. They host Virginia Tech. Some changes for Virginia Tech as well. Did you see the story on Trey Turner, the receiver for Virginia Tech? Yes, the long drive down to <laughs> yes. Miami Gardens. An upper respiratory uh, condition. They didn't want him flying, but he could play football, so they drove him down. And I'll, I'll give you something else. Okay. You know, the, one I'm of ready. the big reasons he wanted to go, he's wearing the number 25 yeah. this week as well for yeah. the legendary coach, Frank Beamer. That special number that a pro player gets to wear each week for Virginia Tech. So... Yes, made the drive down, and that came later. And you'll see Miami and Duke coming up next Saturday. Our season finale. Bates, we made it through three years almost. Not too bad. We'll slow down. We're not there yet. <laughs> As I said, almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. Couldn't do it without the incredible support staff, technical and production crew. On site this week in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the Tar Heels approaching 300 yards rushing. Look at the Terriers. That's pretty much right on their average for the season rushing, and they're doing it against the Football Bowl subdivision team in North Carolina. It's going to be a timeout on the field taken by the Tar Heels. 9.04 to go for the fourth quarter. First significant action of the season for... Drake May seeing play in his third game this year. 34-14. The Tar Heels will set the tone early. Yeah, got to go way back. The opening drive. Garrett Walston getting it started through the air. Jacoby Criswell who got the start today on the ground. And Ty Chandler, a big drive. And capping it off was number six, the sophomore out of Arkansas. Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior. Took 10 plays, 4 minutes and 21 seconds. Nine oh four to go in the fourth. Brooks is the leading rusher with 86 yards. Chandler has 78 and Criswell with 66 in the rushing TD. And Brooks has found the end zone twice in our game from 38 and 14 yards away. Rushing TDs, TDs number two and three this season for British Brooks. Elijah Green, freshman from Roswell, Georgia. British Brooks had his day. With six carries, 86 yards, the two touchdowns, averaging over 14 yards a touch. And here's the new kid on the block. Green. Six yards. Michael Mason made the stop for the Terriers on Green. Drake May has that four yard TD pass to Kamari Morales with his fifth receiving TD of the season. First career TD pass for Drake May. Modest gain, if any, on the play. We'll give him two. Inside of eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Elijah Green hitting that hole hard. He's, he's getting hit hard as he reaches that line of scrimmage. That Wofford defense that continues to stick in there and fight. And here's a fourth down and one. It looks like North Carolina will keep him in there. Try to go for it here. Gotta be careful to stay on side. Offer to use a timeout. They're first here in the second half. We will also take the timeout. Step aside for just a moment with the Tar Heels in control. On Here's this fourth down and one. A little bit of interesting drama here with 7.24 left. Interesting formation as well. Some window dressing, eye candy. And now they're two for two on fourth down. They got three yards. British Brooks gets it done. Second time on fourth and short. They put the ball in the hands of number 24. 
And second time where it looks interesting right off the bat, but then the leg drive. Not just all by his lonesome this time, British Brooks, but the offensive line continues that surge. Clock continues to roll. North Carolina will be bowl eligible with this victory. Mac Brown will get his 265th all-time win, 33 years as a head coach. 90th win as the head coach of North Carolina. Caleb Hood in last play. Coach Brown said, ultra important. Let's go to a bowl game for the third straight year. Is it the Orange Bowl from last year? No, James, but it is still an accomplishment as May handles up near midfield. That's enough for a first down. Well, and it's, it's not the, the team. And, and then a lot of people, there were high hopes by a lot of people, and Mac Brown will tell you, on the outside especially for this North Carolina team. You've got Sam Howell coming back, but you lose so many, so many points, so many yards on offense. You know, Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, Javante Williams, Michael Carter. You, you don't just replace those guys and fill in the blanks. Long pass, fight for the ball, down at the five, wow! J.J. Jones, if you please. 46 yards as he beat Donovan Anderson. Well, that ball's there. Anderson is there as well. Right in stride. He goes back over that outside shoulder, but never losing focus and concentration on that rock. J.J. Jones, even with the hands all over him. Close to, catch. close to the goal line for a hood. Might be at the one or so. They got four. What a catch. It's quite a hand fight there, and won by J.J. Jones. Jones, 6'2", 200, just a freshman. You know, that's two guys with their hands on each other, so it's a good no flag there. Fighting for it, and there's the reaction from Drake May. That'll do. That'll get us down there knocking on the door, trying to punch it in here on second and goal. May the handoff, Hood the carry, and he will not get there. All right. Third and goal. I thought for sure he was getting in the end zone, James. Yeah, good, good fight. We had to stand him up there by that. Defensive front, the penetration there you see, and a good good call right down the line. A good look at it. Didn't cross the plane. Chuck Smith in on the stop. 97 for Wofford. Trying to turn back Carolina at the doorstep. They've done it again on third and goal. Similar look to that fourth and one that they converted earlier. Chuck Smith in there. The sophomore from Swanee, Georgia, the son of Chuck Smith, the great defensive end for the Tennessee Vols, and second round draft pick, played for the Falcons in Charlotte. Wow, fourth down and goal. Wofford making it interesting, trying to make him earn this touchdown, and we'll get a timeout. Terriers take the timeout. And before we witness this fourth down play from the goal line for North Carolina, we'll step aside. 34-14, Tar Heels. Be alive. Only loss for Wake prior to today in their game against Clemson against North Carolina, November 6th. 58-55. Last shootout. two years, the teams have combined for 225 points. All right, here fourth we go. Fourth and goal, here we go. Bates, you got this one? Off of the play fake, there are penalty markers, and May gets rocked out of bounds. Is that the play you were looking for, James? Well, it's, you know, it's an interesting play call because everybody in the house thinking that they're going to run it right up the middle and try to hit them hard with the play action fake. And this looks like it's going to be in coverage against Wofford. Maybe some defensive backs thinking the same thing. And helping them out. Wow. Just when you think you got to... Got a goal line stand. This might be the smallest penalty in the history of Keenan Memorial Stadium. Uh, and, and it's a good call. I mean, there you see 
right there at the, the bottom of your screen. Trying to slip out Morales, trying to get him one more touchdown on the year. I guess everybody biting hard, so yeah, it is, it is the right call. The, the penalty flag shows it. They weren't ready for it. First and goal, North Carolina. That is Hood. Okay, so Wofford. Yeah, that. I mean, it's a fresh. Well, if there was a penalty on the previous play. So, just trying to clarify the down. The holding penalty in the end zone was not an automatic first down. Well, the hold was the hold was immediately off the, the snap as he's trying to come out of the backfield. And they took it halfway to the goal but kept it fourth down. And so a, a, a goal line stand for Wofford. And you know, and Josh Conklin, Conklin, he told Rebecca at halftime that this team will continue to fight to the very end, and they've certainly done that. I mean, not once have they just given up, and that's after that big play, the big catch by J.J. Jones to get him down there. And they get down there, line it up, and fight. They fight even through the penalty. Get it back into the hands of the offense. Okay, Wofford football. So, Wofford with a goal line stand on what was a fourth down play from the half yard line. This is the play prior to that. Okay, and there's the hold. And, right. And and it's it's not on 88. The bigger part of it was on Will. Will Crowley was the player being held as he tried to come out of the backfield. We're checking into the uh, process. Third down and two. Here for Derek and the offense. And now just two minutes to go in the fourth. That play never develops. Plenty of whistles. Well, Conklin went running down the sideline. Time out, Walker. The Did, third and final. 30 second timeout. Didn't like what he saw. You know, and, and, and that shows too. It's it's not only a football team, but it's a coach that here in their last game of this 2021 season. Gonna fight all the way to that final whistle, use up all those timeouts. And I'll just be content to go. Rolling on home at 34 14. Got a long way to go. That ball sits just over the 10 yard line, their own 10 yard line. Trying to get some of those guys healthy in the offseason and have a normal offseason and get back to those winning ways, back to some SOCON championships, eight, nine win seasons like they're used to the last few years. They're at Wofford. So, James, just a clarification on that holding. You must throw the football to have it produce an automatic first down. It's a good clarification. Yeah. Because May did not throw the ball. However, there was a penalty against Wofford, but it kept fourth down intact because the ball was not released by May on the scramble. So here's the play again. It's a great clarification. Good work by our production truck to get the clarification. There's, there's a hold in the end zone. Well, and again, you know, these... Can, can I say that that rule should be revisited? Well, it's, I mean, it's... Can I just put that it, out well, there? It's, it's a great point, but it... Regardless, to turn around for Wofford and to play, again, play another down, and here, got another chance at it, fourth and two of their own, and they do convert. Walker gets it for Wofford. If you commit a pen... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. If you commit a penalty in the end zone, regardless of, but the, we got the clarification, you must release the football. Of course, May, it's not his fault. Yeah. He's trying to run to the end zone. 
But the and the flags came out as he was being forced out of bounds as well as he was looking into the end zone, but just did not release the football. So interesting. Well, it's a you know no ch uh, Ty Chandler after the first quarter, and and you know even no more British Brooks, who was the third string guy in there. It's, Wofford continues to roll it on down, but in these trenches in these these key situations on Friday night It's gonna be a little bit tougher than it was against Wofford right here They're, they're gonna to have to play a, a more complete game and a more physical game if They want to beat the rivals on Friday night Especially in those type situations those who wants it more type situations NC State last regular season game next Friday for North Carolina the 111th meeting against their rivals from Raleigh and now just 14 seconds on the clock North Carolina which won the military bowl James in 2019 to the Orange Bowl last season New Year's Day a loss to Texas A&M and for the third straight year bowl eligible for Coach Brown and the Tar Heels three for three for Coach Brown for the postseason and, and a chance even though they've lost a couple there in the middle of the season, they, they really weren't expecting to. And, and the first one, too, at Virginia Tech, still a chance to finish this season with eight wins. Walker out of bounds. Just a few ticks left as North Carolina will improve to six and five. They'll go to six and one at home. They were five and one at home a season ago. And three and three at home in 2019 in Coach Brown's first year, second stint. This is 13th year as the North Carolina head coach. Just seven seconds to go. Warford will finish up its season at one and ten. In fact, they won their very first game of the year. That was against Elon, 24-22. Over the middle and complete. But that will be the final play of the game, 34-14. North Carolina is bowl eligible, and they send the seniors and the grad students and Sam Howell off in the proper way with a victory for Mac Brown, career win number 265. Josh Conklin hasn't been around Mac Brown much in his coaching career as much as Mac Brown has been around the game of college football. So first taste of the coach. Across the field against Matt Brown.